So I always like this scene. I thought it had a certain tension. And anytime you have uh, needles and clothes coming off, that's a good scene for a horror film, I think. Um, but there was a concern that the the midsection of the film, sort of the f- end of the first act, beginning of the second act, was a little slow. And uh, there were a lot of chefs, as I recall. Um, we had a couple of executive producers and uh, presenters. Dino De Laurentiis was one, and Mustafa Kad was another, and uh, John and Deborah were producers. And everybody had a different opinion about what was needed in terms of pacing. Um, my idea was to see the hospital kind of gradually uh, revealed and uh, the empty hallways, and then at some point, um, things would things would go further amiss at the hospital, and the uh, handyman would disappear, and then the lights would go out, and um, and I always liked that, but uh, at some point, everybody sort of said, "Gee, you know, the film is um, we want to we want to move it faster. We want it to go faster," and. Um, I think at the sacrifice was essentially character. Um, and, ma- and maybe that was a naive for a first-time director to think that character was important. I mean, it's obviously important, but, you know, it was a sequel. And so Jamie Lee's character was already well-established. And, you know, I thought my job was to come in and establish some of the characters who were essentially new characters. So Glory Gifford as the head nurse and... Um, the two uh, young nurses, and then, of course, uh, Jim Medic and Bud, the ambulance driver. Those were all new characters, and I thought it would be important to spend a little more time with them and also to rev up the relationship between Lance Guest and Jamie Lee Curtis. So a lot of these scenes that have been uh, restored for the TV version uh, actually develop their relationship a little bit more. And you see Lance's uh, infatuation, Jimmy's infatuation with Laurie Strode and his concern about her. And um, we were building towards something. You know, we were building toward a little bit more of a relationship. And eventually that that uh, connectivity would have something to do with the ending and a sort of special moment at the end. There was also a little continuing... Uh, antagonism between uh, big nurse Gloria Gifford's character and uh, Jimmy and Bud. And then the sense of uh, isolation that the hospital is cut off and they can't really get a hold of uh, Laurie Stroh's parents. Um, Contrasting with what was going on outside and the search for Michael Myers. um, I thought it had a certain tension to it. In that tension uh, plays plays itself out through uh, some character conflict, but also, uh, as you'll see from these scenes that have been dropped and then restored, uh, there's a constant theme of Jimmy kind of checking in with uh, Laurie Strode. I heard that. Two minutes. That's it. And then this um, next scene that's been dropped and now restored, uh, this begins to set up uh, the progression of what's going on in the hospital and how uh, they can't seem to find the handyman. And then this was a strong setup that uh, everyone thinks Michael Myers is dead and Laura is the only one who doesn't really know. And that's what sets her in motion. That's what agitates her. Let me get out of here. Jill, Janet. Jimmy. Jimmy. Help me, Jimmy. Jimmy. Go get Mr. Fast. He's not dead. I won't say that this is the strongest uh, medical uh, scene I've ever seen. Uh, None of these people seem to know what they're doing medically. But it was fun. It's fun to shoot. And uh, again, we sort of have this, uh, this theme of needles. Get me five He's not dead. He won't die. 
And now this is a big, uh, I think this is a big moment, and uh, I missed it from the original. And this is when the lights go out, and it sort of is meant to escalate um, the tension. And, you know, all good horror films take place in the dark. So um, I was pretty surprised when the decision was made that we would not, um, we would not show the lights going out uh, because you're in the hospital and then uh, suddenly you're, the lights are out and there's no explanation for it. But uh, interestingly, the pace of the movie was such that I don't, I'd never heard a comment. We never received any kind of uh, cards or anything that where anyone said, gee, what happened to the lights? Other kids too. Now maybe there's another boy in there on that slab dead because of him. So uh, don't thank me, doctor. You just help me find him and stop him. All right. Any ideas? Well, if he was wounded, he might have tried to get home. Again, I like this scene because it had a you know, the sense of isolation and vulnerability, and particularly uh, for Pam Shoup's character, she's down in this isolated uh, children's ward, and it's set up. I think it set up very much her really vulnerability. Oh. Somebody broke into the storeroom. Mr. Garrett said some stuff was taken. I'm sure he was just teasing. I don't think it's funny. It's just real creepy. So the tension of the hospital now is beginning to play out a little bit, and and Anna Alicia, who is, who is in fact getting worked up over. Not nothing, but in fact a sense. And you didn't hear Lori Scott screaming about how Michael Myers is still out there. A sense that the hospital may be in trouble. I thought he was dead. He is. He's just flipped out. I'm telling you, it's just pretty creepy. And I always think it's interesting when characters in a film begin to feel the tension in such a way that they begin to fall apart a little bit. 